we're having a little bit of difficulties because I was working on the PowerPoint last night on my computer and it suddenly started flashing red colors and yelling at me that I had a Trojan virus. And I, that's right. I couldn't go any further than, I mean, I had to shut down my computer in order to put it, uh, I'm gonna have to take it to get in to get fixed, but. So no PowerPoint this morning. We're gonna do all of this the old fashioned way. Are we ready? Okay, hold on just one minute. So first of all, I want to welcome everybody to uh, Sunday Morning Live in Eureka and Zoom uh, in Ukiah and other places. I have to read you the announcements because we don't have any Zoom or PowerPoint, as I said. So beginning today, this first Sunday of June, we are going to be starting up our five minute miracle sessions again with our practitioners, which means if you don't know this already, that if you would like to have a free practitioner uh, treatment, free treatment from one of our powerful practitioners, then all you have to do is uh, tap one of them. We have Michelle here, we have Claudia here. Susan's here, yep. Uh, Les can do it. Uh, nope, no Edward. Okay. Anyway, and they will take you off to our wonderful practitioner room and do a short and sweet treatment for you. It doesn't matter how long they are, they work wonderfully. So that's coming back starting today. Also, next Sunday is our Zoom Sunday. So that means you don't have to come to the center or you don't get to come to the center. <laughs> You get to stay at home. Oh, and I had the neatest picture, too, for that slide. It was a guy in bed. I'm trying to put different, <laughs> different people. So next Sunday is our Zoom Sunday. I'll be down in Ukiah. And the, another thing I was thinking about is that we haven't, in the last two and a half years, had a new member uh, experience. So at the end of this month, on the 26th, I believe it is, after Sunday gathering is over, we're going to be having a discovery class to see. So if you've been thinking, if you're not a member already and you've been thinking about doing it, come to that class and then you, that will help you make up your mind whether you want to or not. That's at the end of the month. So again, Lorna is have, continuing to have her writing group, which is really powerful. I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether you're brand new at writing or you're an uh, old hand, you want to work on something. Uh, she gives us a couple of writing exercises and then we share if we want to at the end. And this month it's going to be Tuesday evenings at four. It always is Tuesday evenings the second and fourth Tuesday, which are June 14th and June 28th. And these announcements, by the way, are in your uh, monthly newsletter that you got on the 1st of June. Also, Louise, next Saturday, no, not next Saturday, the Saturday after next, is having her art class. And this one's called um, Unleashing Your Creativity, and it's going to be using watercolors, and she, of course, being Louise, she has a little twist to it. Now, this one is on Zoom, so that will be, uh, you use the same link for everything for all of our classes that are on Zoom and Sundays, so um, that'll be fun to do. That's Saturday, June 18th, June 18th from 10 until noon. Then it, towards the end of the month, we have our Spirit Guided Visioning Team, uh, which will be on June 29th, Wednesday night, June 29th, from 6.30 to 7.30. And it is also on Zoom. And if you read your uh, June newsletter, you'll be able to see some of the results from last month's meeting. Uh, all kinds of neat ideas are coming up out of it. And one other thing, uh, 
Heidi Collingwood has her primetime health class on the last Saturday of the month, so that will be the 25th. And this one is called Move Waste from Your Waist. I like that title. So, uh, and she has, she'll give us two healthy tools. One is reduce your waste, and this W-A-I-S-T. And uh, healthy tool number six is move more. So that's, again, Saturday, when did I say it was? Yeah, the last, the last Saturday of the month, from 10 until 11.30. The other thing I wanted to mention that's really important, you know, this is the first end of the month, that's why you're getting so many announcements, is that we have various leadership positions open now that we're, we're open again. And so we need to uh, find someone who wants to be a secret service coordinator. And that to me is someone who oversees all the different committees we has, have and is the go-to person to make sure that all the needs are met. So that would be like volunteer coordinator. We need a Sunday site manager, somebody who um, makes sure that there's volunteers to open up, which there always are because the musicians are here early, uh, and then volunteers to close afterwards and make sure that everything is straightened up for the AA groups, and that the alarm is set. So uh, that would be a Sunday site manager. And you know, these ma managers or team leaders are, I'm, I'm uh, imploring you to find people to help you be on your, or to be on your team. We also need a kitchen supervisor. This is somebody who makes sure, or creates a team to make sure coffee's made, supervise potlucks, and make sure things are cleaned up at the end. I, even though when we had our cake last week and I opened the dishwasher door and had it out so that people could rinse off their dish and put it in there, I still had to go in there at the end and clean dishes and put them in the dishwasher. And I don't want to do this stuff anymore. And we're also looking for a tech team coordinator. I know that Marvin could use help. I know that uh, Rick and some and I have watched a video for some new ideas for our tech team. And uh, but we'd like to have a manager for that as well, or a team leader. So any of those announcements that you might be confused about, just ask me afterwards, and I will be. I will gladly repeat them. Yes, Les. Are the, is the video being shown online tonight? No, I'm sorry. Okay. Not with a Trojan virus. <laughs> I can't use my computer. And I was, was thinking somebody else could sign in, but unfortunately, I'm so... Um, my computer saves all the passwords and everything automatically, so a lot of them I don't write down. And so, yeah, so bad me, but um, we'll be able to see it, though. I mean, it's ours for watching as long as we want, I'm sure. And it's really a short uh, video for those of you who are interested in being techies. It's a good little video. <sighs> so that is the end of our commercials this morning. I would like to uh, and step into our sacred spaces. And so, um, Michelle is, I'm glad you stood up because then you reminded me who was doing it. <laughs> Michelle is doing our contemplative this morning. Thank you, Michelle. Well, good morning, everyone, on Zoom and in person. This morning's contemplative meditation is actually, uh, I know Claudia did a poem during the meditation before service, and this is a short poem from Rabindranath Tagore, who was an Indian poet and writer. And I just really liked his cadence of this poem, and it goes really well with, with our contemplative meditation. So I'll read this poem, 
And then we'll have a few minutes of silence and just meditative time. And then Jackson will play us into the next part of our service. So if you would just allow yourself to relax in your chair and just let go of anything that has been maybe unsettling or viruses and computers and other really uh, annoying things. And just allow peace and love and light to flow through. The same stream of life that runs through my veins night and day runs through the world and dances in rhythmic measures. It is the same life that shoots in joy through the dust of the earth in numberless blades of grass and breaks into tumultuous waves of leaves and flowers. It is the same life that is rocked in the ocean cradle of birth and of death in ebb and in flow. I feel my limbs are made glorious by the touch of this world of life, and my pride is from the life throb of ages dancing in my blood this moment. breathe in that perfect peace, that perfect oneness, that is spirit flowing through each and every one of us. I know this morning as we come together in gratitude for our service being in here in person and being on Zoom, I know that the right words will be spoken, the right message will come through, and 
will light up our being as we go out into the world and let it flow through to others in need. And so this morning, I give thanks for everything that has transpired for our service to come together in its right and perfect way, and so it is. Be still and know that faith has made us whole. So this morning being a new month, we have, uh, I wish I could show you right now the beautiful slide that Scott did for our PowerPoint for the month. It's a woman uh, like on the shore of a lake with the redwoods in the background and she, she's sort of dancing and it's so beautiful and free. I really like it. And our theme for June is body. And at first when I saw that theme, I thought, oh no, what is that? You know, <laughs> why do we have to do body? And that made me feel uh, then kind of weird about the whole thing. You know, the fact that I immediately had a negative reaction to it. So, uh, and then I read through the things, of course, and, and you know, one of the things that I read is that it really came to me when I read this. So just listen to this. The body, your body, is the only thing, the one and only thing that you completely own. The one and only thing that you completely own. And so when we think about our bodies is, is uh, this idea that this is my body, nobody else can have it, nobody else can use it, nobody else can interact with it at all. I mean, you can, if I let you. But then I started thinking about, okay, this body is our earth suit. It's my body personal earth suit, your personal earth suit. The vehicle that lets you be here in this dimension at this time. And so when you think about it that way, then the, the name of this talk is Welcome to the Temple. And when you think about this earth suit, and you re realize that who's in the earth suit is spirit, that this then can be considered the temple. Which made me start thinking as I was shoving tostada chips in my mouth, <laughs> how do I treat this temple? Now I'm going to tell you that I didn't need a whole bag, thank goodness. Uh, I, I moderated the amount I was eating, but, you know, uh, and, and there's something there, though, that if I think they're bad for me, guess what they have to do? They have to be bad for me. Well, 
whatever I put in this temple should be something that I also consider sacred. And so think for a moment, here's a question for you, think for a moment about this. What immediately comes to your mind when you think about your body? What do you immediately think about? So I immediately think, thought, as I mentioned earlier, that, you know, I'm um, not the weight that I probably should be for my height, etc. Uh, that I don't really treat it, I don't move it as much as I should unless I'm babysitting a dog. And then I have to because I've got to go walk the dog. The... Um, my favorite position seems to be either sitting on the couch or a chair outside or whatever, reading a book or staring at a computer. So how am I treating that temple, this temple? What I know is that whatever immediately comes to our minds when we think about our body is what we're going to experience until we change our thinking and change our feelings about it. And so my next question for you is, do you think that there's a difference between things that are physical and things that are spiritual? I saw somebody on Facebook the other day that said they had just visited the cathedral at Wells. This is in England. It's one of the first big cathedrals I saw when I went overseas. And it is amazing, just amazing. It took over 100 years to build. And uh, I walked into this cathedral, even though it was filled with tourists, and felt the energy of the divine there knowing that all these people, all these people over the years have walked into there to pray. They've walked into this building to uh, seek solace maybe from spirit or to rejoice because somebody's getting married or somebody's had a baby or to just practice their religion but it's always been considered a sacred place, and so it holds the energy of being a sacred place. What if we treated our bodies like that? What if we stopped thinking that this is separate from the divine? What if we started honoring our bodies as just as much as though all those people, including all those tourists, honor the cathedral at Wells. You see a little baby, and you know, there, for me anyway, if I'm doing a christening, and I'm holding a little baby, I can see spirit in them really clearly. As they get older, the twos don't seem like they're so spiritual. <laughs> But as they get older, they begin to start losing some of that awe and wonder and the glows, that's the only way I can call it, the glow of divinity that they had. And then we get to our age, where we're closer to the end of these earth suits than we are to the beginning of them. And we start thinking about it again. We start thinking about what is my life? What has my life meant? What have I done with my life? What is it going to be like to die? What is it going to be like after I die, etc.? I never really thought about that before until I went to India. And there was lots of gentlemen running around India with orange hair. And I asked our tour guide, why do so many older gentlemen have orange hair? I mean, it was the kind of orange that, you know, you've bleached black hair and it's turned orange. And she said that that was a sacred symbol 
because these gentlemen are letting the world know that they are on a spiritual quest. Because they've already had their children, they've already done their work in the world, and now it's time for them to really get into spiritual life. And I remember being on our tour bus in Delhi and seeing this gorgeous green park. And in this green park, from where I could sit on the bus, see out the windows, was about three or four groups of people doing yoga. Most of them the men with the orange hair. And I thought, wow. They're honoring their spirituality in every way. And it was a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. So they had gone from possibly just thinking about themselves being physical to now thinking about themselves as being spiritual. And that's what I want us to do as well, is to remember that there isn't any separation at all. This body, I, I don't know, it has 30 trillion cells in it. I think that's what I heard, 70 trillion, that's what it was. 70 trillion cells are making up this body. And every single one of those cells is working for you, working for me. Every single one of those cells is working to make sure that everything in your body, all the organs, the muscles, everything is working correctly. But then I go, oh, I have a sore throat. My throat is starting to tickle. So they go, yes! And they rush up to make sure you have a sore throat. Remember, we've said many, many times that God's only word is yes. So I want to think of my body as being that living temple and that it's clean and clear and full of spirit. And I, in this idea, I also know that it's up to me to pay attention to what I'm thinking about. I don't know how many of you get up in the morning and go, oh, 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 you know, make some sort of noise as you're going from a prone position to standing. It seems to happen as you get older. But even that, I was thinking this morning, wow, the, the fact that I have held a belief since 1975 that I have, that my back is my weak point. So what do you think my back has to do for me? It has to be the weak point. We just don't know how powerful we are. We don't know that every thought and feeling that we have is going to have an action on us first. So let's stop thinking about our bodies and our spirits being separate. Which leads me into my last question. When was the last time that you got a message from your body? And did you pay attention to it? I remember Helen Street, Reverend Helen Street, my teacher said, I was complaining about having a sore wrist or something like that, and she says, well, why don't you ask it what's, what it needs to know? No, ask it what's wrong. And I'm thinking, what? You know, ask my risk. But I did. I was a really good student. I did what my teacher told me. So I remember going into meditation and asking my wrist, what is it? What's the message that you're trying to give me? And I don't remember what the message is right now, but I do remember that I got one almost immediately. And I thought, Oh, okay, stop doing that. And the, the pain will go away. And I did, 
and it did. So I love the fact that we can actually ask ourselves, we can ask these parts of us, what is it? What is it that I need to know? And then act upon it and probably not have that situation anymore. And so when I think about this idea of uh, our body awareness, I want to say, welcome to the temple. We are walking, breathing, talking, thinking, feeling temples. and how wonderful it is to have the body. So one of the other things I realized, another thing Reverend Helen used to say all the time, was she used to say, be where your body is. You know our minds that are thinking about, oh, I shouldn't have done that in the past, or he said, she said, blah, blah, blah. Or we're out here in the future saying, oh, let's see, if I do this, then I'll have to do that, then this will happen, or whatever. What if they think this? I mean, our minds are either in the past or in the future. They're very rarely right here, right now. And so I'm going to ask you to practice body awareness, because body awareness is a practice of being fully present in this moment. Be right where your body is. Close your eyes for a minute. And feel what it feels like to be right in your body. And allow yourself to send love to every cell, every atom of your body. That 70 trillion or billion or whatever it was. Send love to all of them, every cell in your body. And as you're doing that, feel what that feels like. Take a breath. So with no judgment, let yourself do that during the week. Maybe you might be standing in your garden. Just take a breath and let yourself be fully present in that moment. In fact, you can get all your senses involved. You can smell the flowers or the rain or Feel the sun or the rain. You can be fully present. So this is what I want us to say together. We don't have, we can't read it on the um, on the screen, but uh, Michelle wrote these the affirmations for today, for this month. So are you ready? My body is my temple. Body is my temple. I care for it as I would the divine. With love, tolerance, and consideration. I'm going to read it one more time, but you don't, I'm going to do the whole thing together. You don't have to try to follow along. My body is my temple. I care for it as I would the divine, with love, tolerance, and consideration. And let's go into prayer. There is only one life. That life is God's life. That life is perfect. And that life is the life that I am living right now. 
So I let myself sink into the feeling of perfection. My body has heard me complain about it for years. But now I choose to be grateful, to love it, to know that this too is God. This too is spirit, whatever I want to call that unnameable energy. And I let the divine energy run through every cell and atom of my body. And as it does so, I know it does so with love. Because no longer am I telling it that I'm old or sick or tired or anxious or afraid or fat. What I'm telling it is I am the temple, the temple of the Most High. And as I see other people in my families, in my communities, in my life, I see them as the temple as well. And how wonderful this is to recognize that each one of us is an individualized expression of this amazing, unconditional love. How wonderful it is to remember that our body is listening. So I speak loving thoughts about it. How grateful I am to even have a body, to be able to live in this dimension. How grateful I am to have, to be able to smell flowers and delicious foods and all of that. How grateful I am to be able to see all the beauty that is around me. How grateful I am to be able to hear all the wonderful sounds that this universe makes. How grateful I am to be able to touch, to feel my senses rejoice, whether it's in the fur of an animal or the skin of my beloved or the softness of rose petals or the wetness of the grass in the morning. How grateful I am to be able to taste, to taste the clear air, the clean air even, to taste wonderful foods. How grateful I am for all of my senses. This living in the temple can be a great delight. And so I choose right now to let it be a delight. How grateful I am for this amazing body. And so I celebrate my life in this temple of the divine, as this temple of the divine as the divine itself. And the whole universe says yes. So I know that as I've created some intentions this morning to treat my body better, to recognize that this too is the divine, the whole universe is rushing forward to make that my reality. And I'm grateful for that so grateful. And so I release these words into divine law, knowing that they are already so, and so it is. Well, this morning we get to hear Donna and her group sing for us this morning. So let's give them a hand.
I appreciate the, the metaphors that Angelica used this morning. So imagine this is your body. This song is called Dancers in the Light. Do you need to test this?
wrote that song? Um, I don't recall, but I can get really it back to you. Beautiful. Janice Stansfield? It might have, maybe, maybe Janice Stansfield. I don't wow. recall. Yeah. I don't remember either. Thank you very much. So this is our opportunity to uh, our offering time. So let's think about the gift or the offering we're going to make today, whether it be by putting it in the bowl here or putting it through PayPal or mailing a check in, whatever. Let's just think about that. And we allow ourselves to bless this offering. With everything that is within us, we bless our offering. We know we support this center with not only our thoughts, with not only our attendance, but with our gifts as well. And so we celebrate this center. We celebrate this center and all centers as divine ideas in the mind of God. And for this, we are grateful. And we celebrate knowing that spirit is our source, the source and substance of absolutely everything, including our financial life. And so from this point on, we think about it abundantly, how wonderful it is to be a receiver from the divine, of the divine, and a giver as well. And so it is. So we can't read our statement of inclusion since we don't have it. I don't have my computer. So um, I'm wondering if let's sing the peace song. Let's stand up and sing the peace song. And think about Ukraine and any other places in our universe that are needing this blessing of peace.